Oh, what a mess, Lord. What a mess. And I just said we are. We all are. Looking down here on the earth, I mean, there's 15,000 denominations. Everybody doing that which is right in their own eyes. There's, there's no structure of... I said, you know, in the first century, when somebody wanted to become a Christian, they became a Christian through the church. I mean, the, the people did I said, and, and so we were talking, and Joe says, you know, I think he said it here. We were here by the time we get here, we were talking, and Cece, I don't know, was, I don't know. Cece came upstairs maybe after I started getting kind of fired up, but Joe said, well, you know, he's, and, and what I was saying is people that come to Jesus and people that are trying to come to Jesus are coming to Jesus through all these people that all have some opinion that they've never submitted to anybody with, including pastors who've never submitted to anybody. And so everybody's doing that, which is right in his own eyes. And and Job says, yeah, they need to come to... What did you say? Well... No, no just say what you said. I, I said everybody needs to have their own revelation of Jesus. <clears throat> okay. Um... No, that's not what you said. Well, that's, that's what you meant. Yeah. What did you say? Remember? Anyway, yeah. he said, oh, everybody needs to come to Jesus on their own. Yeah. That's what he said. <laughs> well, that fired me up. But I knew what he meant. That lit up the house. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what he meant. He meant what he said. He meant that everybody has to have their own revelation of Jesus, which I don't disagree with. But what he said was everybody needs to come to Jesus on their own. And I said, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why Jesus lived an impeccable life for three years in front of 120 people and anointed 11 men to go. And and the Great Commission is what? Just go out and come to Jesus on your own? No, the Great Commission is what? Go out and make disciples. And what is the purpose of the disciple? Or or what is the purpose of Jesus imparting himself to 12 men? To Basically 120 people were with him. What's the purpose? So that they could reflect Jesus as he gave them to reflect. And he said, and he said in another place, that those that would believe on me through what? Your word. See? So you see from the very beginning, descending authority. What's one of the key areas of the Bible that I've I've always taught from? It's Ephesians 4. And he gave... Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teacher, for what purpose? To bring the body to maturity. Meaning, you can't have it, you can't get it if you're disconnected. Now, you may not like that. I may not like that. Nobody likes it when that. What does John say? I mean, I know I've said this many times, and I know you guys are know it, but I mean, this is this is. One of the big, big problems why, you know, the church is filled with rebellion. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, So that you can go out and find Jesus on your own. (laughs) No. So that you might have fellowship with us. Now, you got to be smart enough to figure out what that just said. That just said, that which we know of Jesus, we're going to give to you. And if you get it, You'll have fellowship with us. 
Where's the division in that? There is none. Where's the denominationalism in that? There is none. Where's the confusion in that? There is none. Now, you know, Russ was in the Navy. Uh, Joseph was in the Air Force. Mark was in the Army. Uh, I don't know what kind of leadership role you guys had, but when I was on the flight deck, we had new people come to the flight deck, and we had some people come even while we were online in Vietnam. And what do you think, okay, we'll say Josh. Josh, you're a, a new guy on the flight deck, and and so you're a blue shirt. You're a chain and chalk carrying guy. You tie the airplanes down on the deck, and you put the chalks under the wheels, and you pull the chalks, and you undo the chains. And the deck is very busy, and it's very dangerous. There's all kinds of things going on on the deck. You can get sucked up one. You can get chopped out by another one. You can get run over. You can get blown over the side. You can get hit by the cable. You can get hit by people. You can get hit by tractors. You can, I mean, it's a dangerous place, okay? A lot going on. Not to mention the flying debris that comes up the deck when the planes crash. We won't talk about that. Or the, or the rockets that didn't go off when they were fired over Vietnam. That when they land, then the rockets come out and bounce on the deck before they go over the side. We won't talk about that either. So when you come on deck, what am I going to tell you to do? If you think you know, raise your hand. What am I going to tell him to do? What? Do what I do. Do what I do. Follow me. Stay close to me. Listen. Yeah. Am I going to say, go find out for yourself? <laughs> go, every man has to figure this out by himself. The ones that are not, the ones that did. <laughs> doesn't work that way. doesn't work that way in life, in the natural, and it doesn't work that way in the spiritual. He is our example. Apostolic authority is our example. Disciples are our example. You all are somebody's example. And you know why it doesn't work? Because all the examples that are out there are reading this. That's right. You can walk in darkness and make it. And this is what you spoke against on TV, walking in our own sparks. Yes. Yeah. That's why it's airing on Saturday <laughs> during the playoffs. 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 <laughs> playoffs. 